Hey, hey, you all. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Y'all already know what it is. You see the title of this video. This is Real Housewives of Potomac Season 7 Reunion Part 2. Um, technically, if you're watching this, I filmed Part 2 after Part 3 because I had filmed Part 2, but my child, my baby, my baby boy, baby genius is what I call him, um, he started cutting up. And so you could just hear him screaming throughout the video. And I just was like, nah, we can't do this. <laughs> like, we got to re-record it. So anyways, Let's go ahead and get into it. Um, much like part three, there are just some things I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on um, because they're not important. And honestly, these women wore me thin <laughs> with all the lies. They wore me thin, baby. So I have little patience to sit here and regurgitate something that I feel is a lie or that I feel is just BS. So let's go ahead and get into it. We continue with Candace and Giselle. Candace is asking Giselle to say specifically what Chris did. And we know that Giselle cannot say that because Chris did not do anything. So, um, Andy asked Giselle for clarity and he said, was it that you were alone in a room with him and you were uncomfortable or was it just, you know, you felt uncomfortable? You know, what was it that you felt uncomfortable? Is it something that he did to you? See, Giselle is saying that what he did is he caused the emotion of being uncomfortable and somehow he did that and that's what she's saying. Well, he didn't do anything. Period. He didn't do anything. So he didn't, it's the, I mean, like you were uncomfortable because you were in a room with him, but he didn't do anything. There wasn't something he said. There wasn't something that he, did he physically touch you? Did he make, you know, you know, suggestive remarks? If the answer is no, then Giselle, this is a figment of your imagination. And I say that because I just don't believe Giselle. And you all know that. If it was anyone else, then okay, how you felt is legitimate. You maybe felt uncomfortable. But as I said before, what Giselle took a left, left turn for me is she accused him of being a sneaky link, which she didn't even use that correctly. But basically, she accused him of attempting to cheat on Candace. But then she comes to the reunion and she apologizes and she says she shouldn't have said that. So if he was wasn't trying to see if you were with it if he wasn't trying to sleep with you then how else did he make you feel uncomfortable okay got it it's a lie um Giselle blames Candace and says you know you made this bigger than what it is and of course she's going to say that because in her mind what was Candace supposed to do just call up Chris have him come on camera and apologize to you no he didn't do anything and by him apologizing that is loosely him admitting guilt which is why he didn't want to apologize because then you weaponize that apology and said, see, he admitted it, case closed. No, he didn't. Honestly, if we're being honest, it wasn't even a good apology because he was like, if, if you feel that way, and you know, we hate that, right? If you're going to apologize, don't say if you feel that way, but that's what he gave you, honey. That wasn't no real apology. So then Mia attempts to interject and she says, well, you know, Candace, if your friend is telling you that your husband um, uh, that she felt like your husband treated her inappropriately, then why can't he apologize? Giselle responds and goes, no, 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 he wasn't inappropriate. He wasn't inappropriate. He didn't do anything. So then why is he apologizing? Got it. Okay. So... Andy asked Ashley about Deborah and Chris. And of course, Ashley goes, well, you know, Deborah's never been known to tell a lie. She said that it happened, but the, the footage shows otherwise. It was a lie. I think I said this before and I'll say it again for the millionth time. This was a plot by Giselle, Ashley, Mia. I think Robin was in on it as well. And that's why you have someone who isn't even germane to the show, a Deborah, lying on Chris. That's why you have Mia lying on Chris. Why would they lie on Chris? Because it was discussed and plotted beforehand, period. He was their next target. He was collateral damage. They thought Candace was going to fly off uh, the handle, um, how they ac have accused her in prior seasons, and that's how they were going to get her off the show, but it backfired on their asses, okay? So we talk about the happy Eddie comment by Deborah. And Wendy was like, you know, these women get uncomfortable whenever men show them normal respect or, you know, normal decorum. Well, the problem is they, they feel uncomfortable because all of the men that they interact with are nice to them 
for a reason. They're not just nice because they're being gentlemen or they're being kind to them. They're nice to them because they want something in return, if you all know what I mean. Look at Ashley. Look at Mia. Michael and G aren't just nice to them because I want to be. It's I want something for you. You have to pay to play. And that's the type of men they're used to dealing with. So, of course, they're going to accuse somebody else's husband who's just nice for the sake of being nice. You're my wife's co-worker of being inappropriate because that's how that that's basically that sums up the interactions that they have with men. OK, next we talk about Candace's Instagram live. Listen, I'm going to go ahead and put a bow on this. Candace, a hard head makes a soft ass. Robin is not your friend. She's not your friend. Listen, Candace, you probably never see this video, but if you do, come a little bit closer. Come, come close. She's not your friend. A real friend would have saw that live and been like, oh, she ain't talking about me. Or would have been like, girl, I saw your live. Who, who are you talking about? But they would have never thought that you were talking about them. The fact that Robin didn't even come to you to seek clarity, to see if you were talking about her. And she decided to put you on blast in front of the group. And even Andy pointed out, you know, in the live, she praised your businesses. And yet you took the route of bringing a speaker to dinner for what? Because you're not her friend. Robin doesn't care for you, Candace. You think that Giselle is her best friend and she could have you as a friend. Giselle is a mean and evil woman. She, I could almost tell that Giselle forces people to choose. You can't be friends with Candace and be friends with me. Please. That's why she did it. And you know, Candace, you, you saying that you look up to Robin or you're the closest with Robin and that hurt Wendy's feelings because I'm pretty sure you all have had conversations off camera and you've talked to her about some of the things that Robin has done to you. And so for you to look up to Robin, like why would you look up to Robin? Like what does Robin have going on that you look up to her for? That doesn't even make sense. But Candace, a hard head makes a soft ass. Also interesting during this uh, discussion is that Robin was like, you know, Candace doesn't want anything to happen on camera and everything we do um, should be on camera. Everything we do while we're filming should be on camera. Just the hypocrisy. You can't even read Robin. You can't even cuss her out enough. You can't go off on her enough. Just the hypocrisy that was laced throughout this entire reunion. You know, Robin should be ashamed, but she probably isn't, honey. She, I mean, she's married to Juan. <laughs> she doesn't know shame, okay? Next, we get to Giselle's segment. Very interesting that Giselle's segment was mainly filled with Karen, and that's because she didn't have a storyline, okay? So, Andy asked Karen... Did she steal the idea of the live performance from Robin and Giselle? Listen, the answer is no. They they both, every all of these housewives rinse, wash, and repeat. Some of them get into music. Some of them get into live performances. Some of them get into acting. Some of them get into other businesses. It's rinse, wash, and repeat. There's only so many things you can do with your platform. You should use it wisely, unlike Sheree, but it's only so many things you can do. Um, if I had to pick whose live show I enjoy based on TV, it would be Karen's. But honestly, I wouldn't buy tickets to either one. So what are we talking about? Um, Andy asked Karen, if there was a group of the Robins, what would they be? And she said, born, honey, born and dumb. <laughs> Moving on. Next, we get to Giselle and she talks about her fibroids. So here's the thing with this. This is a very real and serious medical issue for a lot of black women. How many of us either have fibroids or know someone with fibroids? Raise your hand, right? So this could have been really something that we explored on the show. We see her go to doctor's appointments and things of that nature. We see her emotions behind it, having to get surgery. No one wants to go under the knife, right? Her surgery was supposed to be three hours and it was eight hours. All of those things is what we needed to see. That was your storyline. To encourage other women to go to the doctor, 
to get, you know, to get their um, yearly checkups. If you're feeling like something isn't right, if you're seeing, if you're having these heavy periods and, and you have um, a, a severe cramping, talk to your doctor more, you know, talk to them about, you know, giving your ultrasound or whatnot to see if you do have fibroids or whatnot. That could have really been a discussion, but instead you chose to lie. And then who else was shocked when she said, my sister? We know so little of Giselle that we didn't even know she had a sibling. That should tell you the piss poor job that production has done with producing Giselle as a character. Everyone else has shown their family. Ashley has, Robin has, Candace has, Wendy has, even Mia has. Giselle has intentionally curated her life to where it's just her and the girls and Jamal and we don't know shit else about her. That is not acceptable and everyone in that production team should be fired or either assigned, reassigned to another project until they can get their acts together. There's no way that year after year, Giselle should be this mediocre. She's had the same tagline for damn near seven seasons. Word on the street is that I'm the word on the street. Word on the street is that I'm still the word on the street. Word on the street. The, if you can't get with the word on the street, then it was um, I'm the baddest thing walking and the, and the smartest one talking, which who associates intelligence with Giselle? Then it was I'm the baddest thing walking and the most anointed one talking. Then it was um, staying out the shade or some crap. I don't know what it was this season, but it's been the same the same rinse, wash, and repeat from Giselle. And the producers have allowed it because of her pretty privilege, because of her willingness to stir up drama. And this is why we're here, because the producers failed miserably to do their jobs. Um, Giselle's hesitancy was sharing, but expecting other people to share. I will say this. Giselle said, you know, I don't expect other people to share, but just because I asked them a question doesn't mean they have to answer. And she's absolutely right. So keep that in mind for next season because they're, they're going to have Giselle back. Any question she asked me, I wouldn't answer. There's no need to because she's not answering yours. She's not being honest about her life. Why do you have to be honest about yours, especially from her? Who the hell is she? She's your coworker. She's nobody special. And you all need to stop coming on this show and treating Giselle like she's special. Every single newbie that has come on this show has kissed up to Giselle as if she's the one that does the hiring and the firing, and she does not. The woman can barely get her hair and makeup done correctly. Why are you looking to her for her to, for her to accept you? Absolutely not. I, mean, I will note that Andy did ask Giselle that, you know, next season, if you're still with Jason, the guy from Summer House, um, are we going to see more of him? She goes, sure. That was Andy's way of letting her know, hey, you have to have a storyline next year. You can't keep pulling this shit, okay? Let's move on to Wendy's segment. So Andy asked Mia to explain her relationship with Peter. And Mia was like, you know, basically that's G's friend. And we just had a thing with one of his ex-girlfriends, which interesting. Okay. So then Andy asked Mia, why did she throw the drink? I'm, I'm going through this fast because it was a lot of lies and I don't have time for Mia and her lies. She said that she had no intention of, you know, getting into an altercation, but that she was just trying to talk business. How do you talk business about something that is none of your business? That doesn't make sense. The bottom line is this. Giselle and Robin put a battery in Mia's back to attack Wendy. It's the same thing that happened Real Housewives of Atlanta. I forgot the season, but when Portia attacked Kenya at the reunion. There was a rumor going around that Phaedra... And, and Nene had basically told Portia, don't let Kenya talk to you like that. While they didn't tell her to fight her, they certainly were encouraging her to be a lot more aggressive towards Kenya, right? And to not take her crap. I think something similar happened with Potomac. I think Mia desperately wants to impress Giselle. She desperately wants to be a part of the in crowd. And so she put put the pedal to the flow and that's what you got was violence and they supported her in that violence right 
Um, Wendy says, you assaulted me, F you forever. You know, Wendy, I support you on that. I do. I support you on it. But the problem is you can't go back and forth with someone like Mia. You know, you apologizing to her and her not apologizing to you. I get it. You wanted to move on. You wanted to move on for the sake of the group, but the group don't care about you. If you ask me, this is a really hostile and toxic work environment for you and Candace. I don't think many people understand what it's like to work with someone who doesn't like you. And they go out their way to show that. Like when Giselle was talking about her um, fibroids and Andy was like, you know, that's something we need to see on the show. She was like, who am I? I'm not telling. I, I'm not telling her my business. I don't like her. She went out of her way to point to you. That was completely unprovoked. You did nothing to Giselle. That's that mean girl shit. I have to let you know every chance I get that I don't like you and I don't want to be around you. And so Mia is taking up with them. She wants to be accepted by them. And so Wendy, you apologizing. Once again, you didn't do anything to apologize for. You were attacked. Stop apologizing. Shit, that's my advice to y'all. Stop apologizing for things you have not done. Period. It, it doesn't make you look more mature. It doesn't do anything positive. Mia has been pretending like she's so um, sorry for what happened. And then you get to the reading, you see she's not sorry. You see the way she talks on social media, she ain't sorry. So then Mia lies on Wendy and says, well, we're going to talk about you giving the cookie to Peter. See, Mia, you lie so much, you're going to get hit with a cease and desist. Because then Peter Thomas had to get his ass up on Rihanna's internet and tell you, I'm going to send you a CND if you don't shut up and stop lying on me. You had your husband looking foolish on these internet streets trying to defend you when what you did was wrong. You keep lying. Get, get me out of here. Get, get me out of here. She doesn't need to be here. She doesn't deserve to be on Housewives. Get her out of here. We can no longer even believe that her storyline is real. And no one in the cast believed it. Everybody was like, oh, here we go. Here go Mia lying again. <laughs> and then even Wendy, she didn't even get upset. She said, who did you hear that from? Now notice, notice, Mia said, I heard all about it. That's what she said. I heard all about it. When Wendy asked, who told you that? Mia said, I saw the camera. I saw the footage but I thought you said you heard about it. Uh-huh. See, this is what happens when you're allowed to play boss and you're not one. You're not very smart, Mia. You and that Giselle, y'all are not smart. You're not quick. And if you're going to lie, at least be good at it. Oh my God. So then Andy brings in Robin and he said, listen, how is it possible for Wendy to be the antagonizer and for you to call her the antagonizer, antagonistic. But yet, Mia's the one who threw the drink at her. So Robin gets to line and was like, you know, I can't, I can't tell you how someone were to retaliate because if someone threw a drink in my face, I don't know how I, would, how I would react. Robin, that's a lie. We know how you would react. And that's what Andy said. <laughs> Roll that beautiful bean footage. We know exactly how you would react. But Robin was like, you know, I was just saying that if she didn't want to fight, that she should stop talking. They showed um, some unaired footage. It didn't change my opinion of the scene. Robin says to Wendy, you know, if she comes over here and pop you, it's because you kept talking. And if you don't want to fight, then stop talking. So wait a minute. I'm supposed to be a coward and tuck my tail in between my legs after this woman assaulted me? No, thank you. I'm not doing that. That's the least of what Wendy should have done. If if when if Mia went back over there to pop Wendy, it's because she's a violent maniac. Oh, and look at it, she did. She popped her with her pochette. And you all, you all, Robin and Giselle, you all were gleeful about it. Go back and watch it. They were literally chomping at the bit about Mia's actions, her assault on Wendy. Okay. So that Robin has been throughout the airing of this season, Robin will see herself on camera and then she'll do a series of interviews to try to undo that. Baby, you got to wake up pretty early in the morning to get one over on me. I see right, what did Jada Pink say? I see right through all that Maybelline, <laughs> okay?
So then Robin and Giselle are asked, you know, why didn't you all have a similar response to the violence perpetrated against Wendy that you had when it was regarding Monique on Candace? And Robin and Giselle basically say, that's because I don't like Wendy. How disgusting is that? Both of them have children. And Giselle, you have three children who are all girls. How would you like it if someone just decide to jump on your daughters and beat them up? And of course, you know how the kids do nowadays. They can't put their phone down. They got to record everything. And they stood there and they recorded it. And when you as a parent asked, how come anyone didn't stop them? How come someone didn't break up the fight? And someone said, well, I don't like Angel, Adore, and Grace. That's why I didn't do it. You would be livid. You are responsible for raising your daughters. And you are the example that they have. Oh my God, what a horrible example it is. You are a mean and nasty person. And that's why that skin is looking like paper mache over there. Because all that evil has to seep out through your pores. You are so disgusting. It, it is almost painful that you are that pretty, but you are that soulless. It's, 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 it's almost painful to watch you be that mean. But it wouldn't be me. I tell you that much, honey. <laughs> I don't. Let me tell you something. I don't take disrespect lightly. I don't disrespect others, and so I don't disres I don't. I don't expect disrespect back. And so, if that were me, I wouldn't be crying on stage. You're not gonna have me breaking down in tears because you want to treat me like an outsider, baby. We're gonna turn them tables right around, okay? That's one thing that I love about Candace. I don't care that she ain't got hands. I don't care that she can't fight. That girl will slice and dice you with her tongue and can't none of them handle it. And that's why they, that's why this whole thing occurred because you all wanted Candace off the show. You thought she was going to do like she normally do and you was going to come in the reunion and fall out and be a victim again. Not this time, baby. Candace, Candace was quick this time, baby. She was like, oh no. <laughs> uh, my boss and already threatened my job. <laughs> she said, like, I got to be better than that, all right? So listen. We talked to Robin about Sharice holding her back. Robin is splitting hairs. She's saying that Sharice didn't have to hold her back. Basically that she wouldn't have continued to charge at Wendy, but that Sharice chose to. Baby, let me tell you something. You got up out your seat and you charged towards Wendy in a provocative, violent manner, period. We're not going to keep going over this. We're, we're not going to do this. Um... In terms of Ashley, um, I think he asked Ashley about her position on violence and her flip-flop. And listen, Ashley doesn't like Candace. As soon, Ashley wasn't even there for the fight. As soon as she came out the bathroom, she automatically blamed Candace. Go back and watch it. We all know what she did. She automatically blamed Candace because she doesn't like her. She feels the same way about Candace that Giselle feel about, that Giselle and Robin feel about Wendy. They don't like her, so they don't care what happens to her. Anything that happens, they're going to blame her regardless. It's the same thing with Ashley. We ain't got to keep wearing this out. So then um, what else does Giselle do? Oh, um, Wendy starts to cry and was like, you know, it's effed up how the group handled this. You work in a very hostile and toxic work environment, Wendy. So yeah, it is very messed up. But the reality is that, and I'm not telling you to leave your job because they pay you guys a lot to do nothing. But do you want to stay there? Do you want to continue to be in a toxic um, and harmful work environment? Because that's what it is at this point. You have the majority of cast that gangs up against you and they pet Mia up and she's the one who committed the acts of violence. That's crazy. That is crazy. I Like for me, I would just bow out gracefully. Y'all can have this show. But then again, I also don't know how much they paying you. And if they was paying me what they paying you, I might just shut up and stay. So I can't tell someone to step away from their job because oftentimes I see and hear people say, well, Candace should leave, Wendy should leave. Y'all, where else will you make that type of money for doing nothing? You going to eat? You go on a trip, you get in a little argument here and there, and you go home, baby, that's nothing. Listen, Andy, if you ever want me to be on the show, I'm going to tell you now, I'm a private person. But if Giselle can create some lies, we can create some for me. <laughs> not, not that far, though. Not, you know, lying on somebody's family and their husband. No, not that. Just some lighthearted lies, you know. Something, something that'll give me a storyline. Because, baby, don't, don't much be going on over here, period. But if you, if you want somebody that's interesting, let me know. <laughs> But um, anyways, um, 
when Wendy started to cry, I found it interesting that Giselle was immediately dismissive. And she was like, well, weren't, weren't you and Mia kissing or something? Very dismissive, um, attempting to discredit Wendy. It's another one of Giselle's tactics that she does because she's an evil gutter snipe, okay? Now, let's move on to this colorism conversation. Um, they should have had a moderator. When, when when Andy said that they collectively agreed to not have a moderator, let me drink some water first, y'all, because, honey, this was a hot mess. When Andy said they agreed collectively to not have a moderator, I knew it was downhill from there because there is no one in that room that can carry that conversation. They needed a, mo a moderator as an external party who is not a part of the cast, who is a black woman, whose life's work involves diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging, and civil rights and things of that nature. They also needed that particular mediator to have watched all the seasons, seasons one through seven, or if they hadn't done it, to go back and do it and take extensive notes. And so then that moderator could have came in and held them accountable and truthful because this conversation wasn't honest and it almost seemed like that Many of the other cast members, specifically Giselle, Ashley, and Robin, they just kind of wanted to get it over with. And, you know, we hear Ashley in part three say, well, you keep reintroducing this topic. It's like she's annoyed by it, but she's annoyed by it because she's a colorist. And I've heard people say, I don't see how Ashley's a colorist. Well, I'm so glad you inquired. I never thought you asked. And so I'm going to do something that they should have done at the reunion, which is Pull out examples. Give me one second to pull it up on my computer because I have plenty, 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 plenty of examples of where there is colorism. Okay, so Future Canary here. I wanted to come in um, and articulate myself a bit better. Watching it back um, in editing, I wasn't as succinct and clear as I wanted to be. So when it comes to colorism, it is much like racism. Not everything is overt. Not everything is in your face. It can be covert. There can be microaggressions. There can be macroaggressions and everything in between. And much like racism, Colorists are not going to admit that they're colorists, Ashley, Giselle, Robin. They're not going to admit that they dislike someone because of the complexion of their skin, right? Um, and so that's why you see the dismissiveness from Ashley. That's why you see Robin and, and Giselle being silent because they don't have anything to, to contribute. They participate in colorist behavior and tactics and language, and they want to keep it that way. For those of you who are probably still on the fence go back and watch season one go back and watch the things that Giselle and Robin said about race and their skin tone and how people mistake them for being white and all that that is how they feel they changed it up for season two because people weren't feeling that elitist mindset from people who didn't even have a quote-unquote elite lifestyle honestly um I remember early on with Potomac they were very clear to try to separate themselves from Atlanta was like well we're, we're not Atlanta and I want to say Giselle said it I could be wrong someone correct me but I remember one of the castmates saying well you know we like Atlanta but we're not Atlanta they were turning their nose up at, at, at Atlanta meanwhile Giselle was in a 500 square foot apartment you know what I mean like it was that elitist thinking that they're better so if you don't have the money Money that makes you better if you don't have the elite stature and status that makes you better what pray tell makes you better it's the skin tone it's the eye color for for years Giselle on her Instagram she had a picture of just her eyes that should tell you what she covets on her she covets the light skin she covets the the green eyes that's why her and robin are friends that's what she said there's another black girl with light skin and green eyes she said that i didn't so when you're thinking about whether there's colorism on the show there absolutely is and i'm gonna list some examples here shortly um in the video um when i turn it back to um the present canary <laughs> but also, just discussing how the audience reacts to Candace. In season five, there were a lot of people who were disgusted with Candace because she showed emotion. I can, I, can, I can safely argue that had that been Ashley, had that been Robin, had that been Giselle, there would not have been that type of negative reaction. Like People were literally harsh. They were unforgiving. They were unmoved. 
They called her a crybaby. But yet, much of the audience is begging for Giselle to show that type of emotion. What do you think that is rooted in? Why is it that when a darker skinned woman is emotional or she's crying, oh no, that's not acceptable. You know, you're a crybaby. You deserve to get your ass beat. That's what a lot of people said about Candace. But then when it comes to Giselle, you know, oh, don't comment about her uterus. That's not fair. Or oh, Giselle, we just want to see more emotion. But you have someone who gives you emotion and it's not good enough for you or you're irritated and annoyed by it. There's a reason for that. And Candace is absolutely correct. When she expresses herself, whether she's upset or she's angry, it is not received well by the Potomac audience or her castmates. But if it was one of the lighter skin castmates, people would be yearning for it. They would be accepting of it. And we see that it's playing out in real time it's playing out in real time um even i've noticed that especially on twitter i've tweeted something and i cannot tell you how many times someone has responded to me and goes i don't like candace or wendy that doesn't make me colorist it doesn't you're right you can dislike candace and, and wendy without it being colorist but why is it that you dislike them because honestly People were upset with Wendy for discussing her degrees and her accomplishments. Why does it upset you that a Nigerian woman, a beautiful, melanin-rich woman can list her accomplishments, but no one gets mad at Ashley for constantly bragging on Michael's wealth? They actually find it funny. They find it quirky. Do you all see the difference with how these women are judged on the show? Okay, people are upset with Candace because her mother helped pay for a home. But yet, once again, no one says anything about Robin. No one says anything about Giselle. If their parents bankroll their lifestyle, it's acceptable. But with Candace, she needs to get it out the mud. She she's spoiled. Well, what do you think Ashley is? She's just being spoiled by her husband. So once again, we have people that are judging these women differently when they're in similar circumstances. Even I've had people on Twitter say to me, well, I don't like Candace or Wendy, but um, I, I also don't like uh, Giselle or I also don't like Robin. No, don't throw them in there. You don't like Candace and Wendy for a reason. I've rarely seen people say, well, I don't care for Wendy, but I like Candace or I don't care for Candace, but I like Wendy. I always see them couple them together. And that's not a mistake. Some people are just offended. How dare this melanin rich woman be educated? How dare this melanin rich woman have her parents take care of her? Who does she think she is? But we don't say that when it comes to Ashley. We don't say that when it comes to Mia. We don't say that when it comes to Robert and Giselle. It's the audacity for these two women who happen to be darker skinned to be living well. We talk about soft lifestyles and soft living for women, but does that is that inclusive of all skin tones and all hues? Because when it comes to the Potomac audience, it seems that it is exclusive of certain individuals. Um, what else did I want to point out when it came to colorism that I didn't mention in this video? Um, before we get to examples, I just want to say that this conversation could be a lot deeper. There's a there's a lot further that we can go, but there's only so much time. And I just wish they would have spent more time on this topic because it deserved it. Um, I wanted all the ladies to be held accountable. Um, some examples that I didn't mention in the video that I'm going to mention now when it comes to colorism. And I think I just mentioned it. Candace being called a criminal by Michael. Candace is not a criminal. She's never been arrested or convicted that I know of. Um, Karen saying that Wendy wasn't a good fit. How is Wendy not a good fit? She has four degrees. She has a PhD. Her husband's an attorney. She has a beautiful home. What about her doesn't fit to you, Karen? Right. We have to start asking these questions, even how Giselle ISIS people out. We have to look at the individuals on the show that she's gone after and they just happen to be around the same skin tone. So with that being stated, um, let me just get her go ahead and get back in the video. So first, Candace opening with the dish, dictionary definition of colorism. I just I was like, oh, this is about to be painful. Also, I just want to address Spending five minutes on this topic was really a shame, especially during Black History Month, because that's when it aired. Um, I appreciate Andy not talking. Some people had a problem with Andy sitting on stage. I didn't have a problem. Where the hell was he supposed to go? They didn't have a, they didn't have a moderator or a mediator, I should say. They didn't have someone there to actually 
take his place. And so if you think about it from a um, audience standpoint, the room would have looked odd. Like you just have a chair that's empty. You needed something in that chair, right? So I didn't have a problem with him staying for it or hearing it, but I'm glad he recused himself because yeah, he's a white man and this ain't for you. This, this ain't got nothing to do with you, baby. Um, but this is why they needed someone who was experienced, a black woman to come in and lead this conversation. So Candace is basically saying, you know, because I'm a melanin rich woman, you know, I sometimes get emotional and how I'm received by the audience is not the same way that a Ashley or a Robin is received. Giselle playing obtuse, you know, she goes, well, what, what does your emotions have to do with your skin tone? See, that's that, that's that gaslighting shit, right? That's her trying to make Candace look foolish. Like, oh, she doesn't know what she's talking about. What does this have to, you knew damn well what she was talking about. And Karen had to explain to you. And I, I was surprised. I was like, oh, hmm, Karen does understand. So why did you say Wendy wasn't a fit for the group? And what did you mean by that? Because I've had people ask me that too. Do I think Karen is colorist? Um, I think Karen has participated. Go back to that first season, y'all. Just go back and watch that first season if you haven't watched it in a while. That will answer your questions when it comes to when it comes to colorism. You know, and what really pisses me off is that Giselle, you had the audacity to say that you have a pedigree and you was living in a box apartment with white appliances. All this pedigree, all this money, and all this status, and you had white appliances. That should tell you how much they've been lying about their lives from season one. The only difference between you and Robin is that you weren't in foreclosure. That's it. But you was a choo away. So let me give you guys give you these examples. I don't want this video to be too long of colorism. Robin calling Wendy antagonistic and accusing her of baiting Mia after Mia is was the one to assault her. Robin sympathizing with Mia after the incident and asking Mia was she all right and petting her up and telling her that was a lot. Yeah, it was a lot of shit that Mia started. <laughs> what are you talking about? Mia calling Wendy, Wendy a ghetto ass. Now, Wendy has a PhD. Wendy has four degrees total. She's a political commentator. She's a professor at the Johns Hopkins University. Ma'am, you were swinging around the pole and sleeping with people's husbands. But yet you caught Wendy a ghetto ass. What do you all think she was alluding to? Definitely not her status. Wendy's husband is an attorney. They have a beautiful family. They live in a beautiful home. What makes Wendy ghetto? I'll give you one guess, skin tone, okay? Mia playing the victim in the confrontation between her and Wendy. Ashley calling Wendy ferocious in a prior season and then putting her hands up like this as if she's protecting herself from Wendy. Why are you being aggressive? What are you protecting yourself from? Wendy wasn't charging at you, she was sitting down. You just didn't like what she was saying. And it wasn't until Wendy put you on notice about calling her aggressive that you stopped Ashley. You don't put your hands up like that to Robin when she charged on you and said, this is not my hand in your face. This is my hand in your face. You didn't do that then, but you did it to Wendy because you wanted to shrink yourself. You wanted to make yourself feel small because that adds to the illusion of you being a victim. Yes, ma'am, that is rooted in colorism. Robin who is routinely violent and the masses have not said anything about it except for this season. And she's been violent since season one, but she's only getting held to the fire because of everything that has occurred on season seven. You tell me why that is. I'll give you a guess. Both Robin and Giselle enjoying Mia assaulting Wendy. When Wendy asked Mia, are you going to do it again? Giselle responded, she might. Go back and watch. I ain't making up nothing. 
There's other examples of season one, Robin and Giselle saying that they get mistaken for being white or that, you know, people think I'm white until I open my mouth. No one thinks you're white, Giselle. Maybe biracial, but no one thinks you're white. You look like a black woman. You just happen to be lightly melanated with green eyes. That's it. You are not racially ambiguous. I got news for you. At least not to me, she isn't. I, I don't look at Giselle and say, ooh, I wonder, wonder what race she is. No, she's a black woman. It, period. Now, Robin, that first season cast photo, I did not know. I did think Robin was a white woman. And then I saw another photo. I was like, oh, she's biracial. And then, I, I mean, I was wrong on that too. So, Robin, I can see people um, questioning or being confused by what she identifies in terms of race. But Giselle, nah, you just got green eyes and light skin. You're a black woman. <laughs> I, I hate to tell you, but you do look black. <laughs> But anyways, um, this colorism conversation wasn't handled correctly. I really wanted them to give examples of colorism and then go around the room and hold each lady who said those things accountable. Mia saying that she has a chocolate daughter or a brown skin daughter. Yeah, you can say that. Giselle does as well, but you all still treat your peers who are melanin rich like shit. And because you do have children, you need to set the example for them. Instead, what examples are you showing them other than you engage in colorist practices? And Ashley acknowledging her privilege, that was some BS. And the reason why it was BS is because in the middle of Candace talking, Ashley goes, well, how, how does Candace know that people don't like her because of her skin tone? I mean, they, they could not like her personality. This, I'm about to say this, right? If I'm saying this and I'm not a mediator, imagine what someone who specializes in this type of discussions about race and identity and ethnicity, imagine what they would have pointed out. Ashley, the mere fact that you can write off someone disliking you to a personality conflict is privilege. Because Candace and Wendy don't get to have that privilege. People who are melanin rich, they can't just simply say, well, someone doesn't like me because of my personality, because that's not what it's rooted in a lot of times. It's not. You have never had a man come up to you and say, oh, you're pretty for a light skinned girl. Now ask your friends who have dark, darker complexions than you, how many times that's been said to them? Because what that implies is that the darker skin is a flaw and that in spite of that flaw, you still pretty. It's the same thing that happens to curvier women. Oh, you pretty for a big girl. What you're saying is that the flaw is her being curvy and that in spite of her weight, you still find her attractive. That is so insulting and hurtful and painful. And you sat there and just wrote it off to personality differences because that is your privilege speaking and then you got annoyed and said well you all say I have privilege or whatever that whatever was rooted in being dismissive Ashley does not believe she has privilege which is crazy to me she also does not believe that colorism exists within the group which is why she whatever she hurried on up I acknowledge my privilege Candace, that was nothing to break down crying about, but I want to be careful because the weight of this discussion should not have been placed on Candace and Wendy's shoulders. It should have been a professional there to guide this conversation. But I also want to be careful to not say that Wendy and Candace should have educated them or held their feet to the fire because really that's not their place either. We're not dealing with dumb women here, for the most part. Ashley, Giselle, Robin, Karen, Mia, they know exactly what colorism is. And if you looked around the room, there were some people that were noticeably silent, Giselle and Robin. What, why do you think that was? It wasn't on accident. They don't have anything to contribute because they benefit from it and they participate in it. I wish this conversation with colorism would have been longer instead of giving Robin 
additional time at the end, you should have added it to this conversation and it should have been handled with far better care. The producers, once again, dropped the ball on this. You all need to fire whoever produces Potomac because baby, they have no clue what they're doing. If there are black people on this team, what 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 did you think? Like what 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 happened? Because this wasn't handled well at all. This was really, and I just have to say it half-assed. And something I want to point out about is that Ashley was like, you know, I've I've gotten into it with everyone in this group. I love every woman sitting on this couch. There's no way that you can love someone and you make up false accusations regarding their spouse. That's gaslighting and manipulation. But overall, I was disappointed with the conversation. It wasn't what it should have been. And also, based on Ashley's um, um, responses, I think that they all believe that they've talked about it and we can no longer bring it up. And that's not the way it works. You know, Wendy and Candace, if you come back, don't be afraid to bring that shit up. Don't be afraid to talk about it. I don't give a damn what Ashley says. Ashley need to worry about that dusty ass wig on her head. I don't, don't worry, don't worry about that. Bring it up and call it out anytime you see it. It doesn't stop just because you had a discussion for five seconds on the reunion, okay? Moving on. Next, we get to Jacqueline and Mia. Listen, you all, I'm gonna just say this. Um... Mia's a liar and so is Jacqueline, so I have a difficult time in believing anything either one of them says. Um, Mia brought Jacqueline on for a storyline, Jacqueline agreed, and so I don't know why Jacqueline is acting like she's above it when she was fine with being in the BS, right? I'm pretty sure she was, you know, paid something to be a friend of the show. I don't even understand why she was at the reunion. She looked nice for the most part. I didn't really care for her dress, but you know, she looked nice. Her makeup was nice. Her hair was cute. Um, but I don't even understand she, why she was there. She wasn't important to the story and she didn't clear up anything. Oh, G didn't buy my car. Mia asked me to lie. I, you didn't have to, you're an adult. My sister is her nanny. I knew Mia didn't have family, so I gave her my nanny. Uh, I don't like when people start talking about other people like they're like they own them. Like that that gets a little that's 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 in a gray area for me, you know. I, I didn't like how she was discussing her sister as if she was like an inanimate object that she just passes around to Mia. But yeah, I you know, I don't care. I don't care if they're never friends again. Um, I know some people want Jacqueline to be on the show. If you ask me, she's just going to lie just like she did this season. So she's basically a 2.0 of Mia. No thanks. I'll pass. And with that, please get down in the comments and let me know what you thought about part two. And if you are seeing part two, that means part three has been filmed and it has been edited. And so it should be up. So if there is nothing else, I will see you all later. And y'all, I'm tired. <laughs> I barely kept my eyes open. <laughs> I'm so tired. All right, you all. Thank you all, and I will see you later. Mwah. Bye.